But the yard had to make sure. Had Jim made a full report of the incident? Yes, and Officer Swift has verified it. What did the yard do? Um, followed routine in such matters. Inspector Parker called Jim in and told him the charge. Jim said he didn't remember what was in the wallet. He'd seen some bills, but couldn't remember the exact amount. The inspector asked him about the money, and Jim said he didn't take it. Uh, they were ready to let it go at that. Is it customary for policemen to check people's wallets? Not unless there are unusual circumstances. This man was in a daze, so Jim had to establish his identity. A week later, Jim got involved in a similar sort of thing. I mean, where a wallet was checked and later some money stolen and reported. I asked Jim why he checked the wallet. He said he wasn't going for the wallet, but for a gun that he thought the man might be carrying. And that uh, he checked the wallet once it was out and then put it straight back. Did Swift corroborate? Yes, sir, as before. The incidents you've told us hardly point to a conclusive case against Jim. Well, sir, I agree about the first two times, and I was all on Jim's side. But the third claim, well, it came too pat, and it was pressed too strongly to ignore. Uh, it happened about a week later, when uh, Jim and Swift rotated to the later patrol. mind telling me why you call me down here after I just got home? Will you lift your window open, Mr. Glasgow? Window? You mean I had to chase half across the city of London for you to tell me that well, I... Well, we have to try and predict your property, but you have to help too, sir, you know? I mean, that's an open window there. It's left open purposely, officer. I wanted to get some fresh air in here overnight. Well, it's an open invitation to a crook, sir. You can just pop in and steal it. Steal? I'll steal what? Don't leave anything around here except petty cash, and that's locked in the drawer in the desk over there. If it'll satisfy your curiosity, I'll show you. Now, I see. All there. Good. But I do advise you not to ask for trouble, sir. I should make certain that the windows as well as the doors are closed when you leave at night. Well, if that's all, officer, I'll ask you to go so that I can close up and get some much needed rest. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Glasgow, uh, but I sincerely hope that I don't have to call you again. If that's a threat, I'm not impressed, Constable. Good night, sir. The next day, Glasgow complained to Scotland Yard, made the most of it, said the police had dragged him out of his house, lectured him on all sorts of efficiency. Then, the next morning, when his secretary checked the cash, most of it was missing. That could have been a crack trick because he was angry. Well, I told myself that, too. But three times. Oh, it was too much even for coincidence. How many cars patrol that particular area? Uh, four, I think. Were there other complaints? No, just on Jim and Swift. Is Swift's record as good as that of your brother's? He's clean, though he hasn't been with the force as long as Jim. These two were uh, friendly off duty? No, I don't think so. But you don't know? I don't keep tabs on my brother's social life. Well, perhaps in this case you'll have to. Well, now. Well, as I told you, Mr. Sabre, the whole thing's touchy. Even if they are innocent, others on the force are bound to talk and, well, that'll harm their service record. I was hoping that perhaps you would investigate in an unofficial sort of way and try and find some evidence that points one way or the other. Have Swift and your brother always worked together? No, they change partners from time to time, but it so happens that the schedule's been such that they've teamed up for the past two months. Does Jim know you've come to see me? No, sir, I suggested it, but he refused. Says he's clean and that's that. I'd say he was a little stubborn about it. Hmm. Very well, Fred. I'll take on the job. Though I must admit this is the first time I've had to go to work on the police. I thought the first thing to do was to see Mrs. Swift, to check up on her circumstances. 
So I sent Bob over. Uh, Mrs. Swift? That's right. I saw your name on the door. This is my card. Oh, oh, you're a salesman. Uh, no, thank you. Thank well, you. no, wait a minute. We really are offering a great buy. You see, we're introducing this brand of brush on the market, and with each one we are giving no, away six coins. thank you very much. I'm not interested. Well, perhaps Mr. Swift. Well, it's my husband I'm thinking about. He, he's asleep now. He's a policeman, you see, and, well, we have to count the pennies rather Well, carefully. we are offering a wonderful credit yes. system. Well, thank you for your courtesy. thing was to check Jim's circumstances. Hi, Archie. Hey, Mr. Page. Well, hello. It's nice to see you. Got a minute, I'd like to talk to you. For you, any time. Archie, are you still lending money? People need it, and I give, so the rates are high. And this is to your neighborhood. Oh, people around here wouldn't borrow from anybody else. You happen to have anybody in this building here? Cortland House, Chelsea. Yeah, I got uh, two clients there on my list. Who are they? Uh, Patrick Dunny, and the other's uh, Marta LCQ. I wonder if you could do me a favor. Sure. I'd like to meet this LCQ dame. Easy enough. Behind in her payments? <laughs> About three weeks. Okay, pal, let's go. See you in a while, Charlie. Well, come on, he's... I shall have the money for you by the uh, end of next week. come about. This uh, friend of mine wants some information. Information? What kind? Uh, Jim Riddell lives in this building. Oh, Jim? Sure, why? You're not starting anything, are you? You're not planning trouble because he's the law. Look, lady, you know me a long time. Has there ever been any trouble? Oh, no. And I carried you on the books when things was tough? Yes. Then tell the man what he wants to know. Oh, but spying on somebody. Oh, no, let's call it discussing somebody. Anyway, it might be worth your while. You tell me what I want to know, and I'll square your debt with Archie. That's right. Is this on the level? On the level. And nobody will know? I, I mean, Jim? Nobody. All right. What is it you want to know? How long have you lived here? Five years. And Jim Riddell? Oh, about three, as I remember. Oh, his apartment's pretty much the same size as this, isn't it? That's right. Ever been inside? I am a respectable woman. Don't flatter yourself. Answer the man. Well, once or twice. I, I took him some soup when he was sick. How long ago? Oh, about a month ago. Notice anything special about the apartment? What do you mean? Would you say it was furnished expensively? Expensive? <laughs> same old junk that we got around here. He pays the same rent as I do. I know that because I've seen the rent list. And that's not high? That it isn't. You'd hardly say he lives extravagantly. Well, that's a stupid question. How could he? How do you mean? I'll wager you every cent he earns goes on that girl of his. You mean his wife? His wife? <laughs> he hasn't got a wife. Do you know this girl? Her name is Vicky. Uh, Vicky Stewart. But that's all I know. Oh, well, thank you. That's all? Hmm. And you're squaring me with Archie for that. That's right. Isn't there anyone else in the neighborhood you want snooping on? A lady might make a fortune. I'll bear it in mind. Bob 
told me what he'd learned so far. I got a rundown on Vicky Stewart and then sent him over to see her. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Good day. Can I help you, sir? I hope so. I'd like a gift. It's for a girl. About your age. Well, now, how much did you want to spend? Well, that's not very important as long as the gift is right. Well, what about this? It's the latest thing from Paris. Very chic. That's fine. You have very good taste. Thank you. You do the buying for the store? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Why do you ask? Well, I don't mean to sound presumptuous, but the merchandise and the way you dress, it's very attractive. Thank you. I always think a woman should try and look her best. Oh, you do. Hardly seems possible. I'll take the bag. <laughs> you were going to say on what I earn here. Well... Oh, it doesn't matter. Matter of fact, I'm rather flattered. Um, no, I, I don't live on what I earn here. I have, what should we say, um, an income? I really didn't mean to pry. Oh, doesn't matter. I don't want you going home and yelling at your wife, your girlfriend, because she doesn't make out on her income. Uh, now, sir, that'll be two pounds five. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good day. See, this Mrs. Swift lives a pretty normal kind of existence. She's a neat little woman. And I'd say they live on a tight budget. Mm, I agree that Swift seems to be out of it. Uh, what about Jim? Bob went to his apartment. Well, I couldn't get into the apartment, but he seems to live a normal life, too. I'd say there were no signs of extravagance there. It's this girl that seems to hold the key. You mean Vicki Stewart? Yes, that's right. It's obvious she's getting money from some source apart from what she earns. What it is, I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Then we haven't really got very much further. Well, except for the girl, we have nothing to go on. Bob and I had a talk with Inspector Parker. Do you think that was wise, sir? I have to handle these things my own way. He knows the whole situation, naturally. He was extremely pleased that I was working on it. Well, you know how Scotland Yard would hate to file charges against one of its own men. Hmm. Did you learn anything from Inspector Parker? I got some information. Some more he's getting me. But it looks like Bob and I start the legwork. Well, it usually ends that way. We've no choice, really. The inspector tells me there are four cars patrolling Jim's beat. Yes, that's what I thought. All complaints have not just been on one car, but on the particular beat worked by Jim and Swift. I think I told you that. Uh, you told us of three complaints of money taken after Jim and Swift had reported a violation. There were more violations. Anything taken? Well, we don't know. The inspector has given us a list of the other violations. We're going to check them. After that, I should be able to tell you if there is any complaint against Jim. Lamarck Saber. Yes, Inspector. Maybe this Vicky Stewart will prove the answer to all our problems. And Saber's walking half around London town. Yes. Yes, very well. You start walking. Vicky Stewart has an independent income, evidently left to her by some uncle she's never seen. While I was busy in the office, Bob started to check on the various violations. My name is Robert Page. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Yes, Inspector Parker called. Uh, sit down, will you? Thank you. I'll get my secretary. Very efficient girl. Very pretty, too. I don't know what I'd do without her. Are you married, Mr. Page? Not oh, too bad. You should be, you know. It's good for every man. Oh, Barbara. Uh, this is Mr. Page. Mr. Page, this is Barbara. Hello. Now, go ahead, Mr. Page. File away. You were reported to the department for a violation about three weeks ago. Uh, yes, uh, the violation was that we left a service door in the package room open. If Barbara was off that day, the sort of thing would never happen when she was on duty. Very efficient, this girl. She can cook, too. Oh, sir, you shouldn't. Oh, nonsense. 
good girls who can cook are very rare nowadays. Was there anything missing when you discovered the violation? Yes, a little. Uh, a few pounds from the petty cash. Did you report it? Well, I told... Uh, Mr. Jillinko. Yes, she did, yes. Barbara reports everything to me. Efficient as well as pretty. Did she report it to the police? Oh, a few pounds. I hardly thought it made much difference. I'm afraid it does. I saw no sense in stirring up the fuss. Well, thank you. That's really all I wanted. Oh, just a moment. Well, now that you've seen her, don't you want her phone number? Oh, really? Well, thank you very much for your interest, but I already have a girl. Oh, I see. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, why didn't you ask me? Fine. No, I'm sorry, Barbara. I did try. I know. Thanks, Dad. Bob continued his investigations in connection with the so-called violations covered by Jim and Swift. The violation read windows left open. Yes, I remember that. One of the chemical dyes we were using went off. It was an awful stench. Couldn't seem to get it out. I told them to leave the windows open. It was inviting trouble. Oh, there's little enough around here that anybody could take away. Was anything taken? Anything at all? No, not that I can remember. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, but it can't be important. Well, let me be the judge of that, please. Well, in the shipping room, where one of the windows was open, well, we always keep a few pounds at the dispatch desk for the use of the messengers when they go out on their rounds. And that money was missing? Yes, the dispatcher told me about it next day. It couldn't have amounted to more than three or four pounds. Do you trust your dispatcher? Harry? Of course. I've been with the company for years. I see. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Peters. Pleasure. Having seen all the people who reported violations covered by Jim, Bob returned to the office and told me about it. Apparently, out of uh, 16 violations, there were seven small thefts, all so small that the individuals didn't bother to report them, but if you add them up, they all come to a pretty penny. Seems cut and dry to me. Guess I made a mistake, Mr. Saber. I was hoping Jim was innocent. It's pretty tough when it's not only a policeman, but your brother as well. Yes. Now it all leads up to Jim. But it leads up just a little too well. What do you mean, sir? Well, the facts are that an officer with a long, clean record suddenly is accused of a number of petty crimes. So small, so obvious that a child could point a finger at them. No, I can't buy the story. Oh, it seems to me that not only would he be too smart for such a deal, but well, if he were going to go crooked, he'd, he'd wait for one big haul that would be really worthwhile. You mean that there's a possibility that Jim is clean? Exactly. We've got to have more proof on Jim. But how? Suppose we frame Jim, set up a situation and observe it, then see what comes. Well, I'm afraid that's a bit irregular for me. Well, you leave that to me. Uh, but I'd like you to come along. Uh, it's up to you. All right, Mr. Sabre. I started this. I'll see it through. I arranged with a plant manager to have one of the warehouses on the patrol of Constable James Riddell rigged for a violation. Then we waited nearby to witness the movements. We were in view of the warehouse, but couldn't be seen. What did you tell the plant manager? Well, he knows there's to be a constable in the car with us watching the door. He was willing. What time is it? A little after eight. Jim should be checking in here soon. He's going in. He's in the office. What's he doing? Here he comes now. Well, now what? We go in and see if the desk's been rifled? Uh, that's one way. Steve 
Madrid. So that's it. Well, let's get him. No, wait. Wait for them to come out with the evidence. Hold on a minute, that's mine. Are you sure? Look, okay, so we broke in, okay, but pinning a robbery is another thing. An easy thing. We planted some marked bills on that desk. I bet the numbers checked too, Sergeant. Look at this, oh, Fred. Please. They're monitoring all the police calls on that. Every time the police car checked in, they could track it. When Jim called in his violations and emergencies, they were on top of it. I don't know what you're talking about. They focused on one man. That was clever too. Made it build up the suspicion. All right. Taking them both in. One thing puzzles me. Why did you pick on Constable James Riddell? I swore I'd get even with him. He pulled me out once. Well, it must have been for something pretty big for you to pull a frame like this. Big? Just for spitting on the sidewalk. Well, now perhaps you'll realize what an objectionable habit spitting is. All right, Bob, you stay over it, Sergeant. I'm calling a police car. All right. next week when Big Ben will chime in another mystery from London. London.